Why do you believe in God? Why do I believe in God? Uh, I, well, I, I like, I use Martin Gardner's book in uh, actually a class that I'm teaching right now, a freshman uh, seminar. Uh, there's a part of me wants to just go with the Gardner argument and say it makes the world so much more interesting to suppose that there's a God behind it all instead of kind of nothing uh, there. I think the mystery of God's existence is, for me, a more satisfying mystery than the mystery of how can all this rich uh, complexity, this, this wonder, this extraordinary experience, how can this all just arise out of particles uh, and, and laws? That, that seems to be very mysterious, as the existence of God is also mysterious. So uh, I'd, I'd rather have the mysteries that come with belief in God than the mysteries that come without belief in God. But there's another side of me that, that feels like that, that belief in God actually does a little bit of work. I mean, I'm, I'm not convinced that there's a gazillion universes and that's how we should explain why this one is so bio-friendly. You know, I'm, I'm not convinced that religious experience can be all explained away as, as just so much uh, uh, evolutionary psychology uh, coming out of our genes and our need for tribal behaviors and so on. Uh, so I've, I find that there's, there's a little bit of work that you can, I think, do with, with belief in God. And so, so for me, I find it, it, it creates a, a more satisfying worldview and, and it suggests a possible explanation for some of the deepest mysteries that science really hasn't penetrated. But you're not pretending to believe just to make life richer for yourself. You actually really believe. Yes. Yeah. But w why? I mean, based on what? I mean, you gave a sort of a negative, okay, because there's a mystery. Yeah, okay, there's a mystery. But that doesn't mean yeah. there's a personal God who, care, who, who, who cares about us. Yeah, well, I mean, for me, if, if you ask a question for me personally, I mean, it, and I, everybody has personal histories. I mean, for me personally, I was raised believing in God. And so for, for me, the, the onus would be on <clears> someone to try to get me to stop believing. So you'd have to, have to say, okay, here's, here's a good set of reasons to stop believing. Now, if I had been raised an atheist and I'm trying to, someone's trying to convince me to believe in God, you'd need another set of arguments. So there's a certain momentum that's, that's there already, and you'd have to have some, some intellectual force to, to turn that momentum around uh, there. So for me personally, I've just never had any reason why I wanted to abandon belief in God. But if you ask me in a more abstract sense, and yeah. also suppose that you don't just have this inherited belief, what reasons might you give to commend belief in God? I mean, I, I would say that I think, I think there is a, it's a richer worldview, and, and, and I like, I like to, th to think that the world is a place where the good that we see belongs there and isn't just randomly popping up here and there and just misinterpreted us by us as being something that titillates and is a little bit pleasurable. I mean, I'd like to think that when, uh, when, when we affirm, and as, as we do, that the world was created by God and it's a, it, a good God and it's a good world that the world has good in it. Genuine, genuine beauty, genuine happiness and so on. Right, I'd like to believe that too, but that doesn't make it true <laughs> in some scientific sense. So you're, at some point you're stepping off the page of, of science or you're, you're stepping out of your role as a scientist. Oh, I mean, just a absolutely. And, yeah, okay. and, and I, think, I think it's important to, and this was kind of in Gary's remarks at the beginning, but I think it's very important to to acknowledge that there's loads and loads of things that are eminently worth believing that are not the conclusions of scientific arguments. If the only thing that we're going to be allowed to believe is something that comes at the end of a scientific argument, then we're going to have a very emaciated worldview. But, but doesn't it concern you just, I mean, not concern, but just give you pause that, let's say you had been born in India instead of America, or let's say you'd been born 5,000 years ago instead of now, you wouldn't believe in Jesus. You wouldn't be a Christian. There was no such thing. So that's got to make you think, wow. I mean, if, if, if civilization had advanced quicker and there were physicists that know what we know today 5,000 years ago, they would discover the same things that, that we discovered. They would because those things are actually out there to be discovered. But nobody would discover Christianity because it's a historically bound, socially created thing. Seems that, uh, that, it seems like that yeah. we have to give you a pause for a moment. Like, well, uh, yes. Uh, now, you know, I talked about having sort of slid partway down that slippery slope, you know, toward you, but not all the way down there with you. Uh, I'm and trying I, to help you. Uh, a lot. Yeah. So, so, so <laughs> I guess 
I guess in, in sort of the part way down that I've, that I've slipped, I mean, I'm, I'm not one who, who would want to argue that, that Christian religious experience is the only authentic religious experience. Oh, okay. All right. 